Hello there campers, it's Mark from Lessons Learnt. Wanted to share with you a little project I'm going to do on my camper. It's a Geo Pro and it has the AC unit in the ceiling, probably like most campers. What we're going to do is install a couple air directors so that we can actually send some of the cold air where we're sitting on the couch or if we're staying at the sink. Right now, the way it's designed, it basically just sends the air in two directions, uh, straight towards the end of the camper at the top of the ceiling. But you can't really redirect it down to like if you're sitting on the couch or working at the sink or at the stove. So I'll show you what we, we found. Um, here's the, the face of the air director. And you'll notice on here that there's a little dimple, and that's kind of like so you can open it. And then you can, you know, adjust like the angle. And I think you can also turn it once it's installed so that you can send the air directly where you want. And then it has also this part that goes into the actual surface you're going to mount it on. So it's fairly flush. It sticks out about three quarters of an inch to an inch. But the face of it looks like that. And this will just slide right in it and snap in. And so I want to show you uh, how we're going to do that. One of the first things we need to do is remove this cover over the AC unit because if we're going to install our air directors or air diverters, um, we need to take it off so that we can drill the holes in it and attach those to it. So the first thing I wanted to show you is this little vent cover that has a filter, or well, it's actually like the intake that has a filter. There are two little tabs sticking out, and if you just put your fingers on those and give a little pressure, it pops out, it's kind of a pressure fit. So you can see here's that grill that goes inside that, uh, over that filter. And then there is this filter. You'll notice I need to clean that, right? Looks a little dirty. But if you just take a, a screwdriver, not prying, you know, with any force and get that past the little tab, there's two little tabs holding it in. And this is that filter. So you're going to want to take that filter out because the screw hole, the screws that are holding this cover on are behind that filter on both sides. Just going to remove the filter cover on the other side. and also the filter that's behind it. Just prying it a little bit, bending it to get it around. There's a little tab here, a little tab over here, and this filter just sits behind it. So now we should be able to remove the four screws that are behind the filter, the two filters, and drop the cover off. So with that filter removed, you can notice here, on this end, there's a recessed hole with a screw in it. And also on the other side, there's a re recessed hole again with a screw in it. Those are the two screws on each side under the filter we have to remove to take this cover off. There are also two knobs that we have to remove. You notice those here controls the temperature and also the fan and turning on the uh, AC or just having fan only. Those are just pushed on there. There's no set screw or anything like that holding them on. So if you take your fingers and pull down on it, it just slides right off. You just want to remove both of them. Not a lot of force. Just enough force to you know pull that knob down straight down uh, i wouldn't use anything to pry on it because you know all this is plastic you probably don't want to be prying around on that very much you don't want to break it there are two other controls on here but we won't have to remove them just a little kind of like a little 
lever or dial that goes back and forth. This opens the vent or closes it on each end where the AC, the cool air, actually comes out. But they're behind the cover and there's just an opening in the cover that they protrude through so we won't have to remove those. I removed the first screw and I thought I would show you what that screw looks like, the head of it. And here's the bit I used to remove it in my driver. You can see it's one of those square drivers. So I tried a Phillips screwdriver first because I really couldn't see up in that hole very good. The Phillips screwdriver did seem to grab a hold of it very good. This is the other side, so I'm going to take the screws out of the other side. I notice you kind of, kind of have to, that those square headed screws or driver, you have to kind of make sure that it's up in the screw well before you, before you start. Kind of feel it till it goes in there. And that's it. So now we're going to lower this down. So I thought you might want to see the back side of this uh, cover of the AC unit. So here it is kind of mirroring how it goes up there. And you'll notice the shape of this box where those two controls are at corresponds to this same shape on the underside. So the area that I have to work with is in here where I'm going to put those two air diverters. And what I'm going to do next is mark uh, where I want to put that and then cut the hole. So this is the area I'm targeting to put these because it's really the only spot where there's a sufficient room to have this flange behind the cover and still have room for the cover to go back on. To mark for the holes, I thought it would be better to go from the back side because on the front side you can't really see what spaces you have. And on this back side you have these flanges that stick up. You also have that kind of like house shaped cut out and that foam padding. That's like a, fo a sound insulation probably. And it gives you an idea of where the space is that you can actually put these flanges. They're three inches. So what I did is I put some tape on there to get a straight line to measure from. And then I measured out and centered the two flanges. And I used that blue tape to mark like a pilot hole because I really don't want to drill the main hole from the back side. I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the back and then I'm going to use the hole saw on the front because uh, I think it would do less damage to the face of the plastic drilling from the front towards the back. My experience has been the side where you drill through with the hole saw seems to take more damage even though I'm going to put tape on it. So here's that flange that's going to mount into the surface of the cover of the air conditioner unit and what I did is I got a hole saw that's actually three inches in diameter exactly this back part and if I hold those up to each other you'll notice it's a very exact match you can see how they match up exactly and the reason I thought that was important is this little tab right here kind of is what is supposed to hold it in like I guess if you didn't put screws so you wouldn't want to make the hole bigger than three inches or those little tabs wouldn't catch because it'd be too loose in the hole. Now I'm going to drill the pilot hole. I just got a wooden crate from the garage. It's dark outside. So 
I marked my pilot hole locations. I'm going to drill it from the back side. And I did also, as I mentioned before, I put tape all across the front where the holes are going to be cut. Because you know how everything you drill, sometimes you get chipping or something like that. So here's going to be our pilot hole. And now if we turn it over, we can see um, more or less where the hole's at. And you notice if I set this hole saw in that pilot hole, you can see it's, it's going to have clearance around these edges. It's centered between this area where the, this has a point on the back side. Here's the other one. And so now we just need to drill that hole. I'm going to try to hold it securely and hopefully nothing breaks. number one it's kind of this thing with these hole saws tend to grab because you got some pretty big teeth on them you can see the teeth on the hole saw so it's always the challenges having it not jump out on you So there are two holes. And so now you can see we have our two holes cut for our flanges. The next thing is to install the flanges and then pop in our uh, vents. Here you can see that I just set the flanges down in the holes. Just you know, double check that the hole size is right and should work with those tabs. It looks like the hole size is just dead on. Before I put the flanges in, I'm just putting a little bit of clear silicone here on the edge. It starts out white, this stuff dries clear. Not going to put a lot. The flange will cover, you know, if there's a little bit of spread out here.
and these flanges have this little tab so I'm expecting that tab to push in and clip behind the back side. And I think you probably heard it clip in. I'll do the same with the other one. And now you can see if I hold it up they're nice and flush with the surface. It also has these screw holes and so I debated that. I'm still still uh, kind of on the fence. Is it a good idea to put screws in those? I don't know if condensation will cause a problem later. I could put a you know a little bit of silicone on the back side of the screw so that <clears throat> you know wouldn't get that as much condensation exposed directly to the back side of the screw. I decided to put the screws in, but I'm gonna drill a pilot hole because I had some bad experiences with things where you didn't drill a pilot hole where the product or the material ended up splitting or cracking. So my drill bits a little smaller than the screw obviously. And I have this driver set on the lowest torque, so just gonna should just snug them down. Well, I had to rip, run it up a little, huh? But you don't want to over tighten these, obviously. So there we have the flanges and the last thing to do is to pop in the actual vents themselves. There they are. You can see that they turn so we can adjust them to the direction we want and also just the uh, little levers there. So you can see I installed the vents, we can turn them, we can adjust them kind of to the angle of the airflow. So this should be pretty nice once we get it all put back together. So now it's time to put this stuff back together. So I'm going to put this cover back on. I let it hang down a little so I could see where that first screw get that first screw started.
go, go to the opposite corner. That way there be something holding it up all the way across. It's always fun when you're working over your head. There we go. Get our other two screws in. The first one wasn't snug because I didn't want to tighten it down because it didn't have any other screws in. But that tightens all the screws up. So we need to put our knobs back on. Again, they just push on. And then we have to put our filters in and kind of just pressure fit to bend it to get under the tabs. And then our filter covers. up there I think working on it and now I guess the real test will be to see what happens if we use it wow I gotta tell you that made a huge difference I'm sitting here on the couch now it used to be all the air was just blown across the top of the ceiling I turned both those vents on me I think even with just one, it'd make a big difference. But it feels so good because today it's 90 degrees, you know, and 60, 70% humidity. I haven't had the AC on the whole time I was in here working on that, so it got pretty hot. My my clothes are feeling a little bit uh, damp just from, you know, being so humid and so hot. So, wow, I can see that this is gonna be a great improvement on our camper, and it really also looks finished. It doesn't really look like something you know that you added it looks like it was part of it and so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give us a thumbs up and also on our playlist we have a few other videos about our geo pro camper and the different things we've done and uh, if you like you can subscribe i'll talk to you soon about the next lesson learned